Hi folks, good morning again. I'm Val from 18 Squad Lab. Before painting the cats, I'd like to announce two events in the coming uh, weeks and months. So the first one will take place in Sintra in the vicinity of Lisbon. That's the scale modeling exhibition from the, the, the Sintra Scale Modeling Club. Um, there will be exhibition, con international contest and some shops. And later on in June, uh, another exhibition, scale modeling exhibition here in Leria. Leria is located in between uh, Lisbon and Porto. It's mid distance. Uh, it's also an exhibition, scale modeling exhibition with a contest and some shops. So let's see together how I painted this uh, tiger one. I first started by cleaning all my pieces, plastic and metallic ones. Uh, with hot water and uh, dishwashing soap. It's very important to remove all the little uh, plastic uh, particles due to the same different sanding operation, but also um, the, the thin layer of uh, grease that you can uh, put on your model while you are manipulating it with your fingers. I then use uh, cuticle uh, wooden sticks that you can buy in beauty shops uh, to uh, prepare all the wheels, the 32 wheels, uh, and also the external accessories like uh, the exhaust and the exhaust covers. Uh, the cuticles um, sticks are generally uh, a little bit thicker than the skewers, uh, and as such, it's uh, much easier to work with, and it costs almost nothing. I further continued with the priming and for uh, this I used the Mr. Mahogany Surfacer 1000, diluted with real colors, high compatibility thinner from AK Interactive. The ratio is 60% thinner, 40% surfacer. My airbrush is a harder and thin back Evolution CR Plus. Um, for priming I used the 0.4 mm needles. To prime, the air pressure was 1.8 bars, just to be uh, sure to reach all the little crevices and uh, corners. Don't forget to use your air mask, just to protect your lungs from the uh, toxic gas. Mr. Mahogany Surfacer 1000 is an outstanding product. It's super easy to use, uh, it's self-leveling. I generally uh, spray the first thin layer, let it to dry uh, 10 seconds, and then I spray the main layer on top. Uh, the final result is uh, really smooth, and uh, I, I really love this product. The airbrush needle did not suffer from any uh, clogging. You can really work for a very long time uh, without experiencing any spray issue. Here is my uh, painting jig at work with the turret support, the, the ugly one. And uh, you can find the, the description on how I build this support uh, on my channel. Here, uh, priming uh, the top turret and uh, the gun barrel. Uh, priming is very important when you build a model on which you have a plastic part uh, mixed with uh, metallic part like uh, this aluminium barrel or other brass photo etch parts. It not only harmonizes uh, the differences of colors of the different pieces, uh, but moreover uh, it ensures a better adherence of all the paints, uh, especially on the metallic surfaces. I decided to go for this dark brown primer 
just to give to give more uh, depth to my base coat, which is a dark yellow. Uh, but as well because you know when you use a a, a black primer, um, it creates um, pre shading, which is quite aggressive, and sometimes it's it's quite difficult to. Uh, to soften this transition between the, the, the priming the underneath layer and the, the base coat. For uh, this tank I decided to go uh, with another set from AK Interactive, uh, the German, German Army set of colors from uh, 1943 till uh, 1945. Uh, which is uh, valid for all the late production tanks. Um, I use the dark yellow and the olive green from this set, uh, but uh, not the red brown. You can see from left to right, the first one is the RC060 from uh, AK Interactive, uh, the one I will use mainly for the base coat. The middle one is the Temia uh, XF60, dark yellow, which is a little bit more uh, greenish. And the last one is a sample from AK Interactive I received a long time ago um, that is more yellowish that I will also use from, uh, for some little parts. Uh, it comes with the reference uh, FS uh, 33440. The base coat was a mixture of 50% uh, thinner, AKI compatibility uh, thinner, and 50% of uh, dark yellow RC060. I sprayed this mixture with my uh, 0.4mm needle and the compressor air pressure was 1.5 bars. I continue to apply uh, the same mixture on the thread and on the hull. One of the most complex tasks I had to face at the beginning was the selection of the camouflage scheme uh, applied uh, on Tiger Ones in the Normandy campaign in 1944. I finally decided to go for a similar camouflage scheme as the Saumur's Tiger One, as this tank was sent back to Germany to be painted as it could have been painted in 1944. So it, it looks to me uh, interesting to follow the mindset of uh, specialists regarding uh, to the painting of the Tiger One at, the, at that period of time. Similarly, I also use this illustration from Craig Tinder, uh, uh, which is on sale on the internet, uh, which represents uh, the Tiger One uh, 222 from Villers Bocage, same period, same uh, location. Uh, which uh, also uh, confirm uh, the, the high probability of a similar uh, camouflage scheme. A uh, known fact is that at that period, uh, the Tiger ones were painted dark yellow uh, at the factory and then sent to the units uh, close to the front line where the crews and all the technicians were in charge to uh, paint uh, the camouflage uh, with handguns. So uh, obviously the quality of the painting was different. It was also uh, common at the period to use uh, spare parts from other uh, knockdown or disabled tanks uh, due to the lack of spare parts coming from the industry because at that period uh, the Allied bombing on the, the industrial zones in Germany were uh, effective. To illustrate this operational reality, I decided to paint some wheels with the Tamiya XF60 uh, dark yellow and the hot part around the exhaust and the exhaust with the AK Interactive sample I received, the FS33-440, just to create more uh, tone variation. After the base coat completed, I decided to uh, emphasize a little bit the highlight with a, a first step of uh, lighter color uh, with a mixture of RC060 and RC018, which is pale sand from AK Interactive. I applied this mixture with my uh, 0.2mm needle uh, on all the edges 
of the tank, which are more um, uh, exposed to the solar UV radiation. Uh, for the wheels uh, painted with the Tamiya XF60, I did exactly the same mixture but uh, with Buff XF57. And of course I used the Tamiya uh, thinner, the lacquer thinner, the one with the yellow uh, cap. Uh, to gain in precision you can also remove uh, your uh, airbrush uh, nozzle head, uh, the diffuser, uh, to have a more uh, concentrated spray. I finally terminate this color modulation of the base coat with an even lighter uh, mixture based upon a 50-50 uh, mixture of dark yellow and pale sand. This very light color is only applied on the top surfaces of the hull and the turret uh, at some uh, edges with the 0.2 needle and a reduced air pressure of one bar to gain in precision. This completes the work uh, with the base coat. You can see on these uh, images that the Rommelkist, which is the, the toolbox on the back side of the turret, and the gun muzzle brake have also been painted with Tamiya XF60 dark yellow to create more color variation. Together with the wheels, these are the pieces of equipment on the tank which are more prone to damages and so to replacement. Uh, this is especially true when operating with all hatches uh, closed, uh, with the turret moving in all directions, uh, which makes that uh, these pieces of equipment might uh, impact uh, trees, obstacles, walls and so on. Okay chaps, it's now time to apply the scratches effect chipping fluid from Megamo. I will apply two layers of this product. Uh, it's applied pure, without dilution, and my air pressure will be 1.5 bars. I will apply it only on the wheels, uh, on the exterior surfaces of the wheels, on the top surfaces of the hull, and on the turret's rooftop. Why now? As I explained, uh, at that period of time, uh, the camouflage painting was done by the crew or by some technicians without uh, a great painting experience. And as such, uh, the paint quality, the painting process quality, was most probably of worse quality than the painting job done at the industry, the dark yellow. Um, it's also a fact that this camouflage painting was done on a hasty way, uh, just prior rushing to the front line. So there was no time to apply it on the correct way or uh, with a methodic application. Uh, my own interpretation of these historical facts and the way I want to tell a story about it is to propose a camouflage uh, layer uh, which is more worn out, especially on the zones like uh, where the crews were um, walking all the time on, the, on, on top of the turret, on top of the hull to, to execute maintenance actions. Uh, the wheels are also um, suffering a lot on, on the tank and the side skirts uh, as well, especially in urban environments where the tank uh, might hit a lot of obstacles. The normal drying time between the first and second layer and prior to applying the camouflage layer is about 30 minutes, but you can speed it up with an air dryer, as you have seen in the images. The first layer of the camouflage will be the RC047 from AK. It's the olive green color. I use my needle of 0.2, a reduced air pressure to one bar, and an eye dilution rate of 60% thinner and 40% paint mixture which is composed only of the uh, RC-047. That way I have a rather fluid mixture, uh, which, uh, which is sprayed evenly and easily, and with great precision. Um, as you can see, I also use my illustrations that I printed out to help me understand uh, what was the, the main scheme of the camouflage, and to try to reproduce the best way uh, this pattern. It is also important to uh, try to respect 
the proportion of colors. I mean, uh, how much percentage of dark yellow remaining, how much percentage of brown and of green, so that you, you respect the harmony of uh, the camouflage scheme. Take care while painting your turret, um, not to overspray your color on the dark yellow. So you need to, to, to work with some mask from time to time just uh, to protect the other areas. Uh, the, the barrel, the gun barrel, was probably the most difficult part to paint uh, given the small size and the number of lines to do. Immediately afterwards, I apply the red-brown. For this, I have selected a mix of Tamiya XF64 uh, red-brown and XF57 buff. The ratio is 80 uh, brown for 20 buff and diluted at 60%. Air pressure still one bar and needle still 0.2 for a maximum of precision. My decision not to use the RC068 from AK Interactive, the red-brown which is included in the kit, is that after doing some tests, I found th that uh, this color was really reddish and uh, really strong, um, creating a lot of contrast with the rest. So um, I, I thought it was easier for me to work with Tamiya uh, red-brown um, it fit my needs and I discarded uh, this choice. The camouflage scheme um, in general shows uh, brown spots painted alongside the, the olive green and leaving only uh, partial uh, spots of dark yellow. The dark yellow should not be predominant and in general the, the shape of the, the, the color spots um, is like worms or beans. Okay, it's now time to reactivate our uh, chipping uh, fluid from Megamo. To do so, you just apply a little bit of uh, hot water with a paintbrush, and then you rub this uh, camouflage pattern with your paintbrush. It could be a soft or a hard paintbrush, depending on what you want to achieve. Watch out not to overdo the effect. Um, the paint uh, is quick to, to disappear, especially the Tamiya one. Um, the real colors from uh, AK Interactive are lacquer colors, so these colors are much more resistant to scratches. Uh, you really have to insist, for example, on the olive green, while on the contrary, the red-brown from Tamiya is a, a, another type of acrylic color which is much less resistant uh, to uh, rubbing with hot water. You can help yourself with toothpicks or even with metallic tweezers to create uh, scratches, lines uh, on your uh, wheels or, or on the tank. Uh, as I explained, my storytelling here is to suggest uh, the worn effect on the wheels uh, by rubbing uh, stones, cobblestones, uh, whatever the type of uh, debris that might uh, interfere with the wheels. Uh, and I will also apply the same on the side skirts. Watch out after the scratching uh, of your paint. Uh, you need to uh, clean uh, your model with uh, clean water uh, because this operation of scratching, especially with the, the paintbrush, is leaving a lot of uh, dirt on your paint. The top surfaces of the hull and the turret were the, the areas where the crew were living, in fact. So they were walking a lot on these uh, areas, they were cleaning their equipment, their guns, um, they were uh, taking care of the engines, and so these areas were really prone to rubbing and, and scratches. The, the zones around the hatches obviously were even more worn out. And uh, obviously, that's only the first part of the scratches uh, on this tank. Uh, the second part will come um, during the weathering video, the next one. Uh, the gun barrel and the vertical uh, surfaces were not treated that way.
I had to remove a little bit of Zimrit to uh, create two little squares uh, on the front side and on the back side of the tank to uh, insert the unit markings uh, as it was the case on this tank. Uh, it is also the case on uh, some other uh, units, so beware of that and check your documentation. Before to applying the stencils, I applied uh, one layer of uh, gloss varnish uh, from uh, AK Interactive on uh, all the specific locations of uh, these stencils. They are not that much. Only the unit markings and the German crosses. To apply the stencils, uh, I used a solution of micro, micro scale, micro set one and two. The one is applied before applying the stencils and the two is a softener that you apply after the, the stencil is on the, on the surface to soften this, uh, this uh, stencil. But uh, all in all, uh, the, I had a, a lot of issue to, um, to fit the stencils on the uh, Zimrit uh, texture. Um, the stencils were quite rigid. And even with the uh, leaders of uh, softener, it was really, really difficult to, to make the stencil adhere to, to the surface. I used Microsol a lot uh, on the stencils. Um, you see here, I'm, I'm trying to, to apply pressure with a cotton swab on the stencil to make it adhere to, to the Zimrit and to take the shape of the Zimrit. But unfortunately, uh, from, from time to time, it happened that the, the stencil uh, sticked to the, to the cotton swab and when I uh, pulled it out of the surface, the stencil broke into pieces. I finally made it happen by applying pressure on the stencil uh, with a uh, soft paintbrush. Uh, the problem was identical on the turret flanks uh, with the, the fitting of the numbers on the, the, the Zimrit but also on the vision uh, plugs. Uh, for this issue I even had to cut the numbers with the sharp hobby knife uh, to make them fit with these uh, vision plugs. Finally, with a lot of uh, care and patience, I made it happen correctly. Um, but I have a, a friend of mine who told me that uh, you, you, you can apply pressure on a stencil with your finger and uh, a piece of uh, paper towel. Uh, it seems that uh, using a soft paper towel, normally the stencil will not stick to it. So might be a nice trick for the future. At the beginning of uh, the painting of the camouflage scheme, I was not considering uh, the option to, to highlight the greens uh, and uh, the brown, uh, given the small size of all these uh, lines. But finally, after the stencil application, when looking, looking at the tank, uh, I saw some bigger spots of green and brown uh, that uh, would require to be highlighted a little bit, especially on the, on the top surfaces. So for the green, I made a mixture of 70% uh, RC047 green uh, with 15% of dark yellow and 15% of pale sand. I dilute it with 60% thinner and 40% uh, paint mixture and I work with a reduced air pressure of one bar to uh, work with more um, precision. I did the same mixture uh, for the brown with 70% uh, XF64 uh, mixed with 15% XF60 and 15% XF57 diluted at 60% with the same air pressure. Well, it's time to uh, varnish the whole model. Uh, the, the basic painting procedures are over. So I apply a VMS uh, satin varnish on all the model. Uh, it's a very nice varnish, uh, easy to use and with an excellent finish.
as suggested by the brand, um, I used a 0.4 millimeter needle, uh, an air pressure around two bars, and you have to apply it wet. That means you need to be generous when applying this varnish. Uh, the, the surface needs really to be uh, shiny and wet from the product. Don't be too afraid. Uh, this uh, varnish is self-leveling. So uh, if you respect the drying time uh, without uh, trying to accelerate the drying process with an air dryer, uh, the, the final result is really perfect. It's smooth, it's level and the details are preserved. This varnishing step is very important because uh, it will uh, turn invisible the stencils uh, film and also it will prepare the, the paint for the, the different washes and uh, weathering procedures. Well, it's time now to put aside our airbrush and start the work with paintbrush. And for this you will need a wet palette. How to do it? Easy, it costs nothing, just a plastic uh, recipient one or two uh, sponge cloths and a vegetable paper for cooking. All you need to do then is just pour uh, water inside of your recipient, not too much, uh, just enough uh, to uh, fill in the, the, the sponge. And by capillarity, the water will, will pass through the sponges and reach the vegetable paper on which you will uh, put your uh, paint. Why using such an ugly device? Easy, it's just to maintain your acrylics paints wet. Uh, if not, they will dry very rapidly and become thicker and thicker with time. I will start painting all my wheels, all the parts of the wheels which are in contact with the tracks with the AK4008 dark gray. Uh, that will be a base coat to receive uh, afterwards a coat of MIG Pigments Gunmetal. My paintbrush is an AK Interactive uh, 2 slash 0. It is also necessary to do the same on the driving sprockets, on the teeth of these uh, driving sprockets, which are in contact with the tracks. You not only have to, to paint the, the sides uh, of the teeth, but as well the inner sides uh, of the teeth, which are also in contact by friction with the tracks. After that, it's piece of cake. Just apply a little bit of uh, MIG Pigments Gunmetal on a paper towel, and all you have to do is rub the part of the wheels which are in contact with the track. These parts you have painted in dark uh, grey or in black, it works as well. Rub these parts onto the uh, gun metal uh, pigment and the result is immediate. You, you have an outstanding polished steel effect uh, appearing. For the driving sprocket, it was a little bit more complicated to rub the teeth uh, against the paper towel. Uh, so I used a tiny cotton swab done for scale modeling uh, to uh, brush the gunmetal pigment on the teeth and in between the teeth of the driving sprockets. Uh, the effect is really realistic and uh, has a lot of depth. So I think it's a, it's a very easy and nice technique. Uh, I used it as well on some tools uh, fixed on the hull. And for the exterior parts of the tension wheel, I spread the pigment with my fingers. It works uh, really nice. Let's give now a basic paint on all the tools present on the hull and around the hull. All the steel parts have been painted black uh, with Vallejo uh, Model Air uh, black paint with a paintbrush on which I will brush some gunmetal pigments from Migamo as I did for uh, the different wheels. The gun barrel cleaning rods present on both flanks of the hull add uh, metallic extremities 
uh, the rest of the rods uh, was uh, wooden made. To organize my work, I first painted all the metallic pieces in uh, Vallejo uh, black uh, before applying the pigments and uh, before painting the rest of the tools with wood colors. Uh, your wet palette gives you the ability to paint for hours, uh, keeping your, uh, your paint wet at all time. That's uh, a big advantage. Uh, your paint is always nice and fluid. I don't really care if from time to time I paint outside of uh, the, inten the intended target, as I know that afterwards will come the painting with the, the, the wood colors, uh, which uh, will give me the, the capability to correct uh, these small errors. For all the main tools, I have used these two colors, old wood and Iraqi sand from Vallejo. Uh, the mixture was done um, visually, uh, and for each tool, I try to modify a little bit the, the colors so that I, I can have uh, more color var variation from tool to tool. Only the gun barrel cleaning rods were painted uh, differently. These rods were painted with a mix of flat brown and tan yellow from Vallejo. Uh, the idea uh, was to give a more reddish tone to these rods. Why? Um, these rods were used to clean the barrel and from what I remember from my years of experience uh, in, as a tank crew, uh, these guns were cleaned with corrosive product, uh, even sometimes hydraulic oils. And this to remove the, the firing uh, powder residues in the, in the barrel. And so we can easily imagine that these wooden rods have progressively uh, absorbed these, cor these corrosive products uh, some of them, like the hydraulic oils, uh, have a red color. So my interpretation is that the wood structure could have turned progressively more and more reddish. Uh, this paint work with acrylics is only a base. Uh, during the, the weathering video, the next one, uh, obviously I will have to work all these colors. Uh, to, to better create color variation and textures. And finally, to achieve this uh, treatment, basic treatment on the tools, as I explained, I apply with my tiny cotton swab uh, a layer of uh, gunmetal pigment from MIG Ammo uh, to give this polished steel uh, appearance. All the metallic tools uh, received a, this layer of gunmetal pigments um, on the edges or on all the areas where uh, the wear effects are more important. Uh, to remove the pigments that fall during uh, application on the tank surfaces, just use your airbrush with a little bit of air pressure to blow them away. Finally, to end up this work with acrylics uh, on, on the tank, I will apply Hull Red from AK Interactive on the areas where uh, the Zimrit has detached. This simulates the apparition of the Oxide Red Primer that was used at the industry uh, prior to applying the Zimrit layer on the tank surfaces. To end up this video, uh, I will just show you what I used for the, the tracks. Uh, we'll uh, see the painting of the tracks in, in the next weathering video. But um, I use the metal burnishing product from AK Interactive. It's a very corrosive product, uh, acting very fast on the metallic surfaces. And as such, I used it to, uh, let's say, prime uh, my metallic tracks from fuel. Once you deem the effect is enough, uh, you have to remove your tracks from uh, this product and wash them with acetone. Once dry, just wash uh, the entire track with hot water and dishwashing soap. Uh, strangely, 
all the parts were not corroded by this product, especially on the uh, outer surfaces of the tracks, uh, in all the little crevices. Uh, I used my hard paintbrush to, uh, to make this product penetrate in all the little holes. But uh, despite of that, there are some little parts of the track that were not corroded by the product. It was completely impossible to, to get them rusted uh, or, or blackened. During the drying process of the tracks, I prepared a mixture of plaster, fine gravels and diluted with a mix of water and uh, PVA glue. Um, this mixture uh, will be applied with a hard paintbrush uh, on the outer surfaces of the tracks. This is to simulate the accumulation of dry mud but also uh, compressed bricks and stones that were crushed by these uh, almost 60 ton machines uh, with uh, steel tracks. Once dry, this mixture turns concrete hard. Uh, I then remove the excess of uh, material with a metallic wire brush. That's all folks. Many thanks for watching. Hope you've learned something. We'll meet each other in the next episode, the weathering. We'll try to give this toy looking tiger one its final combat ready appearance. Ciao, greeting from Portugal.